So, if you don't have one of these, a little bell on your bike, are you just playing with fire and destined for death and destruction? According to a lot of dudes, yeah. So welcome to Professional Monkey Channel, where we take motorcycles and make them more cool, sometimes less cool, let's be honest. I, some of you are rather critical, and that's okay. We're just, we're just going to move forward. We build bikes, we go to motorcycle rallies, we do a little camping, we do some family stuff, but it's mainly biker lore and motorcycle stories and motorcycle club proper protocol and things like that from time to time. Just a lot of good old-fashioned biker stuff. And today I wanted to talk about biker superstitions. And we'll start with the bell, but I got a couple good ones. Some of them I knew, some of them I was rather surprised to hear because I'd never heard before, but we'll start with the bell. So this is a bell, even though it's a really cool one. It's going on my old shovel head right there uh, whenever I'm not lazy and get around to it. But the biker bell is supposed to get the gremlins off your motorcycle. Let me set this down so it's not jingling anymore through the whole video. But the, the that story goes that your bike is covered in little gremlins and they get in your tires and they cause you to have flats and they get in your fuel system and cause your carburetor to screw up and they get in your electrical system and cause your headlights to not work. We're not gonna talk about that, how it's doing it again on the shovel head where the headlights don't work for some reason. We're, we're not gonna get into that, but evidently it must've been a gremlin because I, I didn't put a bell on. The old bell is still on this bike from when I bought it. I didn't put the new one on and that, I, I, I did it. Evidently, I caused the headlights to not work in the old shovel. Anyway, so that, that is actually one of the things of the, the Gremlin Bell. If you buy a motorcycle that's used and the previous owner's bell is on it, that's bad mojo. You gotta take that off and put a fresh bell on. That's his bell. The bell must also be a gift to you from someone else. You cannot buy your own Gremlin Bell. If you're rolling around out there with a motorcycle with no Gremlin Bell on it, you're in danger. Someone you love must go buy you a gremlin bell. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You can have a Viking one with horns or just a plain one. And they must gift it to you because they want you to stay safe. Okay? So that bell you then put on the motorcycle. And all those evil little gremlins and little bastards, they go toward the sound of the bell because they hate the sound of the bell. And the bike is moving. There's air moving. There's all this other stuff. And so they get on the bell and they fall off the bike. That's the story. All the gremlins on the bike will fall off the bike as a result of the bell. Must be a gift. You can't buy your own, all right? That's number one. A couple of them that I had never heard before that I was really interested in. One was that your rear pegs cannot be down when you ride if you don't have a passenger. Now, I've heard that you should never come home with your rear pegs down if you went out riding alone if you have a wife or girlfriend. I've heard that one. I've heard that's, that's a, that is dangerous. That is a down, if I came home Went to bike night without the wife or something like that for some reason. She didn't go along, which would be weird, but if she didn't, let's say she stayed to take care of the little one. And I went to bike night or a ride with some buddies, and I came home, and the floorboards were down the back of my bike. My wife is Sherlock Holmes. She's an actual lawyer. There's no winning an argument in my house. And she's going to see those floorboards and go, who was on the back of that bike? And he knows it ain't going to be a dude. She, he. <laughs> she knows it ain't going to be a dude. She knows I'm not like... Here, Bill, jump on the back. Let's go grab a beer. Like she, she knows that's not gonna be the case. So, floorboards down. I'm gonna be killed. Totally different reason though. This is not that. The idea is if you accidentally, for some reason, go for a ride with your rear pegs down and you didn't have a passenger, that you're inviting an unwanted passenger. The spirit of an evil person or a demon or something is gonna go. Oh, we're gonna go for a ride together. They're gonna get on the bike. And then they're going to cause mayhem and destruction and death and pain and horror and flames. That's, that's the idea is that you're inviting a passenger. Personally, I call bullshit. I believe that this is bikers telling other bikers, don't leave your floorboards down. Your wife is going to kill you. I think, I think that's what it is. But they say it's a demon. You don't want a demon to get on. But that's an old one. You don't want to leave your pegs down. If you're riding alone, you're inviting a bad passenger. Okay. This next one, I think, is nearly impossible to abide by, All right? And that is, you should never buy a dead man's bike. I don't know how this can be done, but the old saying is you should never buy a motorcycle from the estate or the widow or whatever of, of a deceased person. You should never buy their motorcycle because they're going to be mad that someone else is on their bike and that they're going to sabotage you. Well, then I, I have problems because 
I know who the original owner of this bike is, who ordered it from Harley in 1980. I know his name. I have a copy of the registration. I know all that information for this old 43-year-old shovelhead. He ain't alive anymore. I actually found his obituary. Like, it... And supposedly he ordered this bike gold from Harley in 1980 when they didn't pay. So he must have loved it. So I'm screwed if that's the case. But there's another one. You should never own a dead person's motorcycle. Now, because you're going to be mad that you have their bike. I don't buy it. Do you? I mean, the, all these topics I invite you to comment down below because I read all the comments and all that sort of stuff. I respond to most of them, but read all the comments. I do read all the comments. So we know the original owner of this bike is gone, right? We know that his family then inherited it. So there was a second owner, I guess. Actually, no, I guess we, I think it stayed straight from the estate. And then the guy I bought it from is still alive. So is that, am I okay? Because he's the one that had the bad mojo by buying a bike that was just from a deceased guy? I mean, like, am I okay? Because what do you think? I mean, like, I, it's been a pain in the ass. I've loved every second of it because it's a vintage bike. It's one of seven that we own, me and the wife. But it, it, it's been a pain in the ass, but I've loved it. But it is, in fact, a deceased man's motorcycle. Am I, am, I, am I in trouble now? Should all bikes that were owned by someone who's no longer with us all be crushed, destroyed? I think they'd be more mad at that, wouldn't they? I would think the day that I am gone, if someone's out, you know, on my bones, which I don't know if that is that original owner's deceased or not, right? I'd want to see someone out riding it. Don't abuse it. I don't want to see you wheelie boys and burnout boys on my crossbones or, you know, the Cholo bike that was originally my dad's or the others that are still in the rig from Sturgis. But I would want to see them on the road being loved and enjoyed and taken care of and babied and don't abuse them. I will haunt you, right? But I don't know about that one. That one, I don't see how you could possibly do it. And I don't want to be the last one. The next one I want to cover is the the old myth of green motorcycles are bad. Green motorcycles are bad luck. You should never own a green motorcycle. I mean, I abided by that for years. The Grinch, who I'll put a picture of right here, is the first green motorcycle I think I've ever owned. I can't think of another bike I've owned that's been green. They've always been, honestly, black, silver, gray, lots of shades of black. But this is the first green bike I ever had. And the old saying is you should never have a green motorcycle. They're bad luck. Green bikes are bad luck. Never have a green bike. Da, 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 da. And I, I tried to do some research to find out where that came from because no one can ever tell you why. No one can ever say, well, you don't want a green bike because they don't know. It's just you shouldn't have a green bike. It's bad luck. I did a little research, and I have there's one theory that's, that's, I guess, more commonly accepted, and that is because the bikes from the war were green, right? A lot of dudes rode olive drab, green Harleys. Did Indian actually get any bikes? I think they got some bikes in the contract, but there were, you know, Harleys. They were riding green motorcycles over in, during the war, World War II. And so guys were shot, you know, they, you know, terrible things happened in the war. And then those bikes came home and all the, the vets bought them and chopped them up and modified them. Thus the name, the bobber, the chopper, all that stuff came from that taking post-war bikes and, and I'm sorry, war leftover bikes and bikes that were brought home after the war, chopping them up, all right? So a green bike is bad because it represented combat and pain and terrible stuff that happened to guys over there. And that kind of makes sense. I get that one. And then they also say the ones that you bought, after you painted them and chopped them up, they still had been abused and not taken care of. And so they had all that bad mojo again from being in the war. So that's, that's an interesting theory. A theory that I actually thought of, which is why I even thought of doing this video, was I was watching a video the other day on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Not for religious reasons. Don't get weirded out. I'm not a weirdo. It was a video that popped up that talked about the story of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I was like, well, that's interesting. I never, I never knew that they had names. I've heard the four horsemen. We've all heard of that. But I didn't know until I watched that video that they each had a name. That there was uh, the, 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 the horseman of conquest is one who goes out and like not wages war. That's different. But tries to conquer the world. And then there, I think there is the, the horseman of war who goes out and starts war and then there's famine that's which i think they call pestilence sometimes i can't remember and then there's death and you, i'm sure you heard the line a million times before if you went to a, a religious school like i did and all that sort of stuff but that does uh and there was a a man appeared upon a pale horse and his name was death that you know so that is death the, the man from the 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 four horsemen of the apocalypse one of them is death wow he took a long time to get that out i apologize but Fun fact, and that's what this video was 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 getting into, was 
and, the, and he was on a pale horse. And that could be a translation issue. And pale could have meant green. So if you look throughout history, whenever the four horsemen are shown, death often appears on a green horse, not white, as they did in like Tombstone when, you know, Wyatt Earp was on a white horse and he and the man upon him was death all stuff. The green horse was typically the, the horseman that was death. So I wonder if any of that, am I totally full of crap? But I was watching this going, maybe that's where the green motorcycle is bad and the man upon the green motorcycle is death. I guess... I don't know. It's a theory. It's as good as any other out there, right? I love the World War II one. I'm not, you know, dumping on that. Of course, that could be a good one. They might be right. But I feel like if the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the man who symbolized death was always on a green horse that could have sort of filtered down through society and, you know, lore and passing down these sort of stories. And the green horse was bad. was bad luck. It was an idea. I'm sure I can think of another one, but I need seconds. My damn phone is ringing. And we're back. That pesky real job I have gets in the way of me having fun a lot. I just don't like it. Anyway, I did think of two more real quick that I want to talk about. And these are modern. And these are ones my grandfather taught me. And they're not really motorcycle specific, but definitely applies. Okay. And when I say it sort of came from modern days is because there's more and more opportunities where your bike is broke. So you put it in the back of a pickup truck to get it to a dealer. Or if you have a toy hauler RV like we do, and you're going to Sturgis and you're loading your bikes in the RV or whatever, or if you've got back problems, can't ride long distance. And so you trail your bike, whatever, whatever your thing is, no judgment, right? And there will be no judgment in the comments. This is a no judgment zone. We respect each other. Okay. All right. Now I'm done. Um, but those two things my grandfather taught me forever ago is, number one, never let someone else hook your trailer onto your truck. I haven't heard this one before. Never, never let anyone else hitch up your rig. Always do it yourself. Why? Because they may not know all the intricacies and stuff that you've done that's a bad idea to sort of cobble things together. Well, come on. My grandfather had some hitches and stuff that he pulled. That was the weirdest thing ever happened. My phone just turned off. So I don't know. I don't know if I got that or not, but... What I was saying was my grandfather had some questionable stuff. <laughs> totally his grandson. So like some hitches on his boats and stuff that were cobbled together and, you know, tongue was not exactly safe, that kind of stuff. But he said, never let someone hitch on your rig because if there's a problem they don't know about, they're not going to be able to handle this, that, and the other. That, and because even if they do do it right and everything's just fine, you're in the back on your boat working on the fuel tank or whatever, works on a motorcycle as well. Um, but you're doing something and your buddy hitches on and then you're going down the road and that sucker lets loose and comes off or whatever, there's going to be a thing between you and your buddy. Even if you are the most wonderful guy on earth who's like, no, nah, it was an accident. He didn't mean to. He's trying to be helpful, et cetera, et cetera. But it went bad. You're still going to be like, that's so much cost my friend. So you don't want that. Never let someone else hitch on your rig. Now, because if, it, if something goes bad, you want it to be your fault, right? I, I, that's, I feel that way strongly about stuff. That's the reason why I don't accept help on a lot of things unless I just get to where I don't know what I'm doing, because, which is pretty often. But um, because if, if something goes bad, I want it to be on me. I don't, want, I don't want to have any sort of issues with a buddy. And the other thing is connected. Never let someone else load your motorcycle. I've seen it. I've seen dudes that maybe they haven't been in the saddle that long. And they're a little afraid of their own shadow. And so when it comes time to put their bike in, they go like, oh, I'll do it. And then they have their, their buddy, Bill, Bob, Fred, Jim, Mary, whoever, load their bike for them because they don't want to ride up the ramp. I, 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 can't, I can't empathize with that. I think it's a bit nutty because I would never let someone else load my bike unless I was injured. That's one thing that's different. But if you let someone else load your bike and strap it in, that's the sort of the next step here. Again, same thing. They may not do it right. They may not do it to your liking. And then if something goes bad, you get to your destination and you open that door and the bike is in another guy's bike and there's damage, this, that, and the other. It's happened to me. It's very, it's a bad thing. It's happened just once, but it's, it's bad. Anyway, um, you don't ever let somebody else load your bike because if it goes bad, you're going to be mad at your buddy and you're going to think you did a crap job and you're going to have this issue. But it's bad luck to let someone else load your bike. The idea is, Someone else loads your bike, they will have caused the bad mojo. That will have caused the thing to go bad. And then there's going to be a thing there. So never let anyone load your bike. Never let anybody hitch on your rig. So what other ones have you heard? I, I guarantee I've heard a million of them. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sorry. I I'm, I'm guarantee there's a million of them that I haven't heard. That's what I was trying to get out there. So comment down below. What other traditions, uh, things we're afraid of, 
uh, the, you know, besides biker bells, that sort of stuff, superstitions that bikers have that if you do or don't do, the world is going to end, okay? Comment down below what they are. I'd love to hear them. I really will. I'll read every comment and reply to most. Uh, one last plug for my friends at Cycle Source and that whole community. Smoke Out is just about 10 days away. It's in Rowan County Fairgrounds in North Carolina. If you don't have your tickets, go to smokeout.com and get them. And if you don't want to do that, you can just buy them there in person, but you're going to hold yourself up. But go to Smoke Out. You can camp there, hang out, or get a hotel if you want to, if you're one of those people. I'm bringing my camper because I got one, so I wouldn't do that. But love you all to death. Take care of each other, other. We'll talk real soon. Bye.